All right, everybody, an active night developing out in the plains here. You're looking behind me, northeast Nebraska. Again, this is timed data here. This is around just before 6 o'clock here Wednesday evening. Tornado watch in effect out there. Uh, what we're going to be watching is going to break down the threat for severe weather. According to the outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center, go day by day. So take you through the rest of the evening, and then we'll take you on into tomorrow and then into Friday. All the severe weather risk, if you're watching for the Tennessee Valley, stays well west of us, but we will have thunderstorms coming through late afternoon, early evening on Friday, followed by a cooler weekend ahead. Right now it's time to subscribe, like, so you get notifications when I do go live. I do occasionally go live. In fact, more likely to go live for events outside of the area and kind of do the normal Facebook uh, live as well. Here's what we're looking at uh, tonight. Let me make this full screen so I can actually control it a little bit better. We've got a moderate risk for severe weather out here. This is model guidance. This is the future radar. And we're also starting to see some thunderstorms developing down here in south central Kansas. Actually, I'd say northeast of Wichita. So in between south central and northeast Kansas. Those will likely be hail producers. And a lot of hail with these storms here in the moderate risk area as well, northeast of Manhattan. And this is just because it's so muggy there. There's so much instability to work with. And if anything can get going in south central Kansas tonight, Wichita to Emporia, that could be rather severe. And you'll see we're going to, I'm, I'm going to take you through future radar. Then we're going to go through the Cape, the instability, and then we're going to go through the 850 millibar winds because the area low pressure is still developing and those upper level winds are still going to be uh, moving through. And I do want to reinforce to follow your local uh, TV broadcasters in these markets here as well. They're going to have the best information as far as any call to action or imminent severe weather that uh, you'd really need to be aware of, you and your family. But notice by 9 o'clock, it starts to move uh, towards... The Kansas City area, north of northeast of Manhattan, but it kind of stalls out a bit. Uh, north central parts of Missouri, kind of getting outside of the Outlook area. So it's a really uh, small, detailed area. This risk of severe weather, and I think the initial tornado threat is going to be early this evening through about 11 o'clock. Notice some new development here as we get on into uh, uh, the 11 o'clock time frame. It's kind of focused right here on the southeastern fringes of that moderate risk area. That tornado watch goes until 11 o'clock tonight, so the model data here is right at 11 o'clock. And notice kind of a sharp divide here along I-70 and to the north. That's where the tornado watch is. Uh, this stuff over here in northern Missouri, around 1 o'clock in the morning, shouldn't amount to much. But notice another robust area of thunderstorms moving across the same area. That's as that at the upper level energy kind of moves through, the area low pressure moves through, and I'll get to that in a second. And also uh, just mainly heavy rain with that and maybe some smaller hail. As we get into Thursday morning, everything's northeast. The air is still very unstable to the south. This is the Cape. This is the amount of energy these storms have to work with. And this is model guidance here around 830. Notice the, the lack of energy. This all becomes rain cooled rather quickly up here to the north. But as I mentioned, uh, the threat for severe weather is is there to the south, but I think you're capped from Wichita down to Yates Center, down to uh, areas in and around, I believe we've got Independence and south towards Arc City as well in south central Kansas. So there's con conditionally unstable there. There's a lot of fuel, but there's no match to light it, so to speak, because you could be capped in those areas. But a very muggy night ahead as we go into the morning hour, still a lot of humidity down there to the south and still watching those areas for the, again, the possibility if you do get a storm, it could be severe, even though you're in kind of the southern fringes of the watch area as we go through tomorrow morning. Here's that energy helicity index. This is really high. And that's why I think it's so capped in this area that, I mean, if that cap were to break, uh, these numbers here are really, really high, especially Wichita around 2.30 in the morning. But I, I, just, I just think you're probably going to be capped, and that's why you're not really in a higher risk area for that, uh, but definitely something to watch. Here's a look at the low-level jet stream. Again, these are winds above the ground, about four to 6,000 feet. Uh, about 7.30 this evening, they start to increase across this area from Wichita to Emporia. This is what we call the low-level jet stream and it basically moves in from the southwest and it's tracking to the northeast, uh, and that's gonna enhance that secondary area of rain that you saw overnight. Notice the wind's really picking up there over Emporia again, way off the ground, about 70 miles per hour, and this whole area kicks off to the north and east, so the severe weather threat kinda ends there. Now as we kinda shift into day two, this is going to be tomorrow, 
This is a slight risk area that kind of covers a large area from just south of St. Louis and <clears throat> on down towards Waco, San Antonio, north of Houston. Dallas kind of right in there. If you got a flight into Dallas tomorrow, uh, may need to watch out for some delays depending on when this uh, develops and starts moving in. It's going to be rather bumpy across this area. This is the, the area, the frontal boundary that's moving through, and we're going to see some strong thunderstorms here, mainly looking at gusty winds, probably severe wind gusts, large hail. Initially, uh, over south central Texas, there could be a, a brief tornado threat with that. And as we continue on, this is all going to be by 11 o'clock towards Memphis. And this is eventually what's going to move into North Alabama. But all this fades away because all the energy has gone. One thing we'll watch is a big round of thunderstorms. In fact, a complex of storms could actually break off of this and move through uh, southern Louisiana early Friday morning. So here's all the Cape. Here's all the energy 1030 Thursday morning, really centered from Dallas to Waco to College Station in Houston. Notice how the northern edge gets really skinny up here from St. Louis to Little Rock. So it'll be a short window there for severe weather and it really breaks off. So by 10 o'clock tomorrow night, most of that threat's over with, with the exception of areas from Houston to Beaumont, Port Arthur, and southern Louisiana as that moves in. Here's that EHI setup. Looks a little bit higher here from Dallas to uh, areas of southwest Missouri, so that's why I think that initial tornado threat may be there with that wind shear, but it's quickly going to move off to the north and east. And as we get on into uh, the day three setup here, this is going to be Friday morning. Notice the big complex of thunderstorms just off the coast. So not good for deep sea fishing out there on the oil rigs. So kind of stirring things up. Uh, what I've seen lately is we're going to watch the northern edge of this kind of break off with thunderstorms. Those will move towards North Alabama uh, late in the afternoon Friday. But the short range model guidance doesn't put a whole lot here into southeast Texas Friday, so it may be capped as well. So again, uh, we'll be watching that. So overall, uh, what I'm doing is breaking down some of the setups here. You notice the Cape here Friday afternoon uh, continues to drop to the south and east. And again, all the severe weather threat stays well to the west of the Tennessee Valley. But again, we'll be watching that. And I'm going to try to provide more of these updates uh, with active severe weather, uh, especially when it's out west. So again, that's a breakdown of day one, day two, and day two. Uh, three, that is, of the Storm Prediction Center outlooks.